Hi there. Today I'll talk about neon sign colors and how they work. We are looking at my neon color palette. It's a display board that I made using all the colors I have already worked with. It's glass tubing with 8 to 12 millimeters in diameter. Always difficult to photograph neon with correct color reproduction and my camera doesn't perform well in video mode so we'll be working with these photos instead. Even the photos will still look different on your playback device than on mine. All tubes on my board are made by Technolux, so I'll use their color names. You can find cross-reference lists on the internet in case you have to match a color from another tubing manufacturer. Technolux, by the way, have great data sheets on their website with lots of information on the tube colors. All tubes except the bottom one are filled with a mixture of the noble gases argon, neon and some mercury vapor. There's a little ball of mercury around 2 mm in size in each so-called blue gas tube. When we turn back on, you see this clear glass arc that the blue gas emits a pale blue color, not too bright. The neon is added for better tube performance in cold environments, but does basically not change the color compared to a tube that is just pure argon and mercury. Mercury is unfortunately necessary to get brightness. Here is a shot of a freshly made tube where the ball of mercury has just been rolled in and the mercury vapor has not moved all the way through. You can see how dim it would be without mercury. Now the mercury vapor discharge generates ultraviolet light and various phosphor mixes can be used to convert that UV light to all kinds of nice colors. The phosphor is a powder coating on the inside of the glass tube that can be wiped off with a finger or a cotton swab. It also can be accidentally blown off when the tube breaks and air rushes in. On the left we have three different whites, a 4000K neutral white on top, 2900K warm white in the middle and a 5500K cooler white on the bottom. Whites are available in different qualities that differ in light output and in color rendering. That means how natural a colorful scene looks when illuminated by that white. They make white phosphors with CRIs from 60 to 99, where 100 would be the best possible. That is what a natural sunlight has. Then I have four greens and I'll switch off once again so you see that one tube is colored glass. That is emerald green, very vibrant and nice. Colored glass is about three to four times the price of regular glass. Next to it we have apple green, a double coated tube. That means it has one phosphor coating and then another on top of that. Double coated tubes often have the little problem that the color looks different in tight bands. Below there is traffic light green, the brightest green and bottom right is standard green. And here you see the problem with photographing neon because these two greens look the same on my screen but they look very different in reality. The colored glass is a much deeper color. Standard green is one of the cheapest phosphors and it's the one that loses the most brightness over its lifespan. While the modern traffic light green maintains almost full brightness through thousands of hours. On the right side, going up, we have Coral Rose, a more rare intense pink, then a standard pink, then super blue, and above that standard blue. Turning off again, we see a yellow colored glass, that's a novial or novile gold tube, and a double coated clear gold below that. Then violet and raspberry on top of that. Very beautiful color, not much brightness though. And then on the top left there is super turquoise, also very bright. Now let's go to the bottom tube filled with pure neon gas and no mercury. On the right end you see the classic fiery look of clear red neon. There's not much color variation to make with neon and also they don't make special phosphors for that. So those pieces are actually tubes intended for blue gas that give you a little variation with neon. We have a white phosphor that makes a soft red. A standard blue makes a hot pink and standard green makes a very hot reddish orange. Around 20 to 80 tube colors are available depending on the manufacturer. It has become difficult to produce them because the chemicals used in the phosphor mixes become harder to obtain. Standard fluorescent tubes are dying out and the neon industry used to get quite a lot of their chemicals from these manufacturers. You can check out the websites of the manufacturers of neon tubing for more information like Technolux, 
EGL, FMS Brillite, Voltark, and Gloucester Tube, and some more. That's it for today. Hope you enjoyed. Goodbye.